Hey everyone, Graham here from therecordingrevolution.com, and today I've got a drum mixing tip for you. We're looking at using room mics. So if you've recorded a drum kit and you tracked a room mic, or if you've been given some drum tracks that have a room mic or a, a pair of stereo room mics or something, the idea is you want to use them if they're decent sounding because they can add a really, really big sound to your drums. Drums that sound huge on a record usually had a, ne a decent room mic tracked and you blend that in and it sounds huge, especially if you like to compress your room mics pretty heavily like I do. But the problem is if you over compress them, you get a lot of cymbals and that can wash out your drums. So take a listen to the problem and then you might understand what's going on. Here are the regular close mics on the drums. And then here's a room mic by itself. So what's pretty fun to do is to take a compressor, in this case I've got an 1176 copy on the room mic with a 20 to 1 ratio, so very, very heavy compression. Very slow attack, very fast release so that all the transients are coming through and it's releasing off the compression pretty quickly. And then take a listen to what this compressor is doing to the room mic. Now that's awesome, right? You get like that Led Zeppelin, John Bonham, massive kick and snare sound which if you blend with your closer mics can give you an awesome, awesome sound. But guess what also is showing up with this compressor? The cymbals, right? So that's not pleasing because what happens is, is you blend that together and you get this. No room mic. So what you end up doing is you pull the fader down, 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 so that you minimize that annoying cymbal washing crash. But in essence, what you've done then is just reduce the desired effect of the room. So the solution is simple. Use a low pass filter. Okay, a low pass is the opposite of a high pass filter. It is a EQ curve that lets the lows pass through, like this example, and it cuts out the high. So it's also called a high cut. Pretty simple thing. What we're going to do is simply just roll off a lot of the high end where the symbols would be. So in this case, I've got a low pass set to carve everything off above 4.5K. So take a listen to what that does. So if you're no, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that the kick sound and the snare sound in the room mic are pretty much unaltered when you put on the low pass. So you continue to get that nice kick and snare smack, but you just minimize or turn down the cymbals. Now by itself it sounds muffled, but now what we can do is bring it in the mix and it's not going to take over the uh, close mics. <laughs> Right? So you just get massive room sound without your cymbals that are overly compressed washing out, destroying everything. Pretty simple concept, but consider it next time you're trying to get the room mic sound and you want it prevalent in the mix, but the cymbals are taken over, a low pass might be exactly what you need. Hope that helps your mixes. And guys, thanks again for checking out the video. Please subscribe if you're digging the videos, if these have helped you in any way. It'll keep you up to date on all the new videos that are coming out weekly. As well, if you do Twitter, check that out if that's your thing. Facebook, join the discussion there if that's your thing. And then also, if you don't ever venture over to therecordingrevolution.com, if you're someone who's watching this right now just on your phone or just on YouTube, 
go over there, get the free ebook, uh, The Number One Rule of Home Recording. There's also probably 70% more content weekly on the site there that doesn't show up on YouTube. And it's all going to help you with your recordings and mixes. And there's a lot of great discussion happening there as well. Thanks, everyone. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon, guys.